if you convert those from, dec from decimal to binary, will ignore. So what this is saying is, I want you to look um, carefully at the first three octets of whatever comes into this interface. But whatever the fourth octet is, ignore it. We don't care about it. This is what the wildcard mask is doing, specifying what we need to check and which one we want to ignore. So once we configure our policy, okay, once we do that, that's step number one. Step number two says, okay, what is the direction? Since an ACL, standard ACL, is basically looking at the source, is becoming in this way. So this will be an inbound policy. With that being said, step number three, we will go under Ethernet 1, interface Ethernet 1, and the syntax to apply that access list will be an IP access group 10 in, in for inbound. So that means that if this request comes in, there's a policy associated with it, and it says, okay, I got permit this, oh, that matches. Then you can go through. One thing that I want to talk about is, very briefly, is that there's also some called a explicit deny that is not configured, and you do not need to do anything. What it's saying is, if there is no match, there is an invisible access list that is configured for anything that you configure for an access list. Standard, extended, numbered, named, doesn't matter. Which is basically doing this, access list, 10, deny, any, any. That means if there's no match, it's going to drop it. So please keep that in mind, that whatever you want permitted, you need to make sure that you permit that policy. And here's something very similar, the same thing, but using numbered, um, sorry, um, not numbered, named access list. Here we're just saying that IP access list standard, and the name we gave it was STD ACL, STD standard for standard, I know it came out wrong, and doing the same information, permitting the source network and the wildcard mask. But how it's applied is kind of the same, but we're using the actual name and not the number. Extended ACLs. So an extended ACL would be something like 100 to 199. And this is for numbered ACLs. The syntax is a little bit, little bit longer, as you can see. Here we're saying access list and the number, which is 100 through 199. We permit or deny. We specify the protocol, which could be TCP, UDP, IP, and, and there are um, a lot of others, like EIGRP, even GRE. The source IP information, host or subnet, the wildcard mask, similar to the same thing that we talked about for standard ACLs, and the argument. The argument could be something like equal to, greater than, less than. We'll talk, we'll talk about that further in another configuration example. Followed by a port number, which is optional, but rarely even used. Then we have, but then we have the same details, but for the destination end the destination IP information, the, the wildcard mask, the argument, and the actual port number. For a named, um, for a named access list, it's exactly the same, similar to a standard, but we're doing IP access list extended, the name, and really the same information that we see here for the numbered. All right, configuration time, using the same diagram of the actual network flow that we talked about. So here we have the following thing configured. This host or host or host computers on this subnet needs to communicate to this server only for web services. How would I configure that? First, I specify access list 199. That makes it extended. Permit TCP. Because remember, though, we knew that this is an HTTP connection that uses TCP. So I know this is TCP because of here. So I can put that there. The source is 192.168.1.0. Talked about a wildcard mask, so it's checking the first three octets of that network. And that the destination is 192.168.2.10. If I say host, that means it's, per it's pertaining to a host, not to a subnet, which is just 2.10. So 2.11 or 2.20, which could be something else, maybe other web servers. They would not fall, they, that would not match this particular policy. Then we see an argument which is equal to 80. And that is basically saying that I can only talk from this network, I can talk to this server at 210 only on port 80, which is dedicated for HTTP or for web services. 
and applying it is exactly the same way. I can apply it here on this interface and doing so the request coming into Ethernet 1 would know that this is inbound so it's coming into this interface and doing so is looking at the source well the source is here and that matches destination is this and that also matches so that's why you want to understand what is the actual flow is it going to be inbound or outbound let's do another example that's more practical the same configuration just change things up a bit we can also use the, the command call any okay now any means that any source that means maybe 192.168.1.0 or 4.0 or any other subnet we can imagine any subnet will automatically be permitted but we can only talk to 2.10 on port 80 so I can configure that in the same way and applying it works the same way as well here's another example but using the um, the named access list which is providing doing the exact same thing that's configured but um, configured from the numbered access list let's get a little detail here um, this is not really recommended but we can do this so this is the same example but we're including some additional details here and this is for a numbered access list here we saw from the one of our previous examples let's kind of go back for a second you kind of see what I'm talking about here we specify from the destination, we reflected what that port number is. We knew that because of 80 here. But nothing here was listed here. Well, this is optional, it's not required. And if it is required, then we can do this in this particular way. I can say after the source, subnet, and the wildcard mask, I can reflect the argument, which is less than, greater than, or equal. Well, this is saying greater than 1024. So it says if the port number is higher than 1024 and 6778, which is the source port, falls under this, it will match that. If it's less than, then we will have a drop connection. Also know that we also again have a, a, have a um, explicit deny for this policy as well once it's implemented. Here's another way we can do it. You, uh, if you notice that from the destination portion, we were using host space. 2.10. Well, we can reflect all zeros because remember, zero means I will check each octet that is being used. And one, the number one, I will ignore it, like here. In this case, it's saying that we're checking all four octets, and this is the same thing um, as doing host 182.168.2.10. Another thing we can do is when I configure a policy, I can enable log at the end of it. So what this means is and if logging is enabled on your router, this means that uh, whenever there's a match for this particular entry, it will log that, whether it's to the buffers, to a syslog, depending on how things are configured. Uh, what's very common, which I like to do a lot, is I like to configure another line. So I configure everything that I want to permit into my network. Next, I like to be more explicit and say, okay, access list 199, do a deny, IP is the protocol, any any and log and this is actually very very good for troubleshooting because what's happening here is that maybe I can figure a policy that I can figure um, that 